this week's masterclass will be about Lightroom's HSL panel. If you want to follow along, make sure to grab the raw files from the link in the description. And now let's start. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. These three elements affect the colors in your photos in different ways. Hue refers to the actual color itself, like red, blue or green. The hue slider in Lightroom's HSL settings allow you to change the color of specific areas in your photo. This as an example allows you to target green foliage tones and turn them into autumn colors. Saturation refers to the intensity of the color. So just like the saturation slider in the basic panel, bringing it up or down will increase or decrease the color intensity. The difference is, here you target each color individually. Luminance refers to the brightness of the color. Adjusting these sliders, you can make certain areas brighter or darker and thus it's great for shaping the light in an image. Think of a blue sky with the luminance slider, you can target the blues, make them darker and this way just add a bit more contrast. So by using these sliders, you can easily adjust and enhance the colors in your image to make them pop. Let's take a quick look at the panel itself. At the top, we have the different categories. We have Hue, Saturation, Luminance and All. The last one just shows all the HSL settings at once. So we can ignore that one for a better overview. In each category, we have a slider for each color. Red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple and magenta. Depending on in which category you are, the sliders indicate how they will change the color when adjusting the slider. As an example, changing the aqua color in the hue tab pushes it either more towards the blue or the green tones. Now for some of you, the HSL panel might look different. That's because Lightroom offers us two different views. Right now, I'm in the HSL view, but clicking on the color in the panel's title will give us a slightly different interface. The settings are still exactly the same, but in the top row, you now have the different colors while hue, saturation and luminance are put together under each color. It doesn't really matter which UI mode you use or prefer, but for the sake of this tutorial, however, I will continue in the HSL mode, which I also personally just prefer. Let's jump into the hue settings. Keep in mind, I already applied some editing to this shot, so the outcome will look different with different settings applied. So the hue settings are great for fixing weird looking colors, but can also be used for creative effects, such as creating autumn foliage or bringing the overall color palette of an image more in line. Here we have a naturally vibrant sunset shot. The first thing I notice is how the blue tones are slightly shifted towards purple, which makes the sky look a bit strange. It's especially visible in those darker areas. This means we want to have less purple in the blue of the sky. And to fix that we need to target two colors, purple and blue. For both we want to bring down the hue carefully to fix the purple color cast and get a more natural blue tone. Then let's focus on the warmer highlights. At the moment those are mostly made up of yellow tones. I want to make them warmer by giving them more of an orange color cast. For that simply bring down the yellow slider a notch. As with all other sliders in Lightroom, it's better to use lower amounts to keep the change subtle. Because if you're going too crazy, the change will be obvious and we don't want that. To make this effect a little stronger, we can also play around with the orange slider. Just bring it down a little bit as well. At this point, there's a green field in the foreground left. We could either make it look more natural, giving it stronger green tones by bringing up the green hue or bring it more in line with the other color tones of the image and drop the green hue. This just comes down to personal preferences. For this video, I want to restore the green tones, so let's raise the slider. Perfect. I'm pretty happy with these changes. Let's click on that switch to see the image without those HSL adjustments. It might be hard to spot in the video since it's a very subtle change and due to YouTube compression. But the changes make the colors look so much better already. 
Still, we do lack some intensity, so at this point let's switch over to the saturation tab. The goal with saturation is not to make everything way more vibrant, this would look super strange and it's a beginner mistake we all have made at some point. Instead, we want to pick certain prominent colors and make them just a little more intense. For this scene, that would be yellow, orange, blue and maybe even the green tones. First off, let's make the sunset more vibrant. I especially want to make the orange colors pop, so I'm raising them quite a bit. I also want to bring up the yellow tones, but since this will also impact the field in the foreground, I will just raise them very, very slightly. Then we can improve the color contrast that is going on in the sky between the warm and cold colors by raising the blue saturation. Again, just bringing it up slightly is more than enough. Finally, we are left with the green saturation. Instead of increasing it, however, I'm going to drop it, since at the moment the greens just don't mix well with the rest of the image. And by dropping the green saturation, I make it look much more pleasing without losing the fresh green tones we previously adjusted in the hue tab. At this point, you might think, hey, let me raise the reds to create an even more intense sunset shot. And for other sunset images, you would be right. In this case, however, we are lacking the clearly visible red tones. So if you bring up the red saturation, you will get some weird looking effects along the edges of the clouds. For this particular photo, it's better to not touch the slider at all. Finally, switch over to the luminance tab. As stated in the intro, with the luminance, we are controlling a color's brightness. This means by bringing up the green luminance, we are raising the brightness of the field in the foreground, which creates a really cool light effect. But be aware, raising the luminance also means the colors become less saturated. On the other hand, dropping the luminance not only makes the color darker, but also adds a bit of saturation. Next, let's work on the sky. We can add more contrast between the bright and dark clouds by targeting the blue tones. Here, simply drop the blue luminance. But be careful, since overdoing this will again create some weird edges along the brighter clouds. As there's still a bit of purple in the sky, we can bring down the purple luminance as well to further improve this effect. That looks great. Now this looks pretty good to me. Again, let's turn off the switch to compare the image to before. This is the image without HSL adjustments and here we have the image with them applied. You see it's way more vibrant with way more interesting light, but it's not overdone. I want to give you another example. Earlier I was talking about creating autumn foliage. For that all we need to do is to bring down the green and yellow hue. To make this effect nicely visible for this video I'm going to drop both of those sliders all the way down so you can already see the orange tones in the grass and in the trees in the back of the image. To further improve this effect, just switch over into the saturation tab and bring up the yellow tones. And here we have a very quick and easy autumn tone effect. And for the final effect I want to show you, head into the luminance tab. This is something I do for most of my daytime shots with a visible blue sky. I bring down the blue luminance slider. And this, in turn, adds a very nice contrast between the blue sky and the clouds, almost like polarizing filter on your lens. And very quick and easy to do. And with that, that's it for this week's masterclass. I hope you were able to learn something new today. If you want to be updated with future classes, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask me in the comments. And Thank you very much for watching this video.